Today we're going to be talking about undocumented windows functions and structures. These are functions and structures that are exposed by the windows DLLs, but they are not documented by Microsoft, meaning they don't actually want us to use them. The thing is, though, is that tons of applications use these things, especially when you're talking about antiviruses and malware. Inevitably, in your hacking journey, you will run into the need to use some of these. The whole thing can be rather confusing if you're just new to it. So as an introduction, this video is going to teach you how to use NT query information process. This is one of the very first functions that you're going to be using, and it's going to introduce you to some of these undocumented structures. So why do we need NT query information process? If we go to our source here, there, we have this function that you should all be familiar with, git module base address. It uses the tool help 32 snapshot library. And this function can loop through all the modules that, in our, that are in a target process. But what happens when an anti chi or a malware or something hooks that function and hides from it? How do you find those things then? Or maybe you're developing a hack and you want to hide from anti cheats. You're going to want to know how this function actually works. So this is abstracted from us. We as users just call this function and then the kernel takes care of that stuff for us. But internally, it's looping through a, a, a linked list of modules, which is in the peb loader. So if we want to make a git module based just function, which does not use create tool help third do snapshot, we can do that by using NT query information process, parsing the peb, parsing the loader and parsing that linked list. So that's what we're going to do today. If you're watching this video and you're interested in these undocumented Windows things, you will definitely want to read my guide on it. I go into depth telling you all about it. There are several excellent resources for researching them. There is uh, ntinternals.net. We have the x64dbg uh, ntdll header file. This is what I use predominantly for everything. We have the Virgilius project, which is actually new and it's really cool. MSDN has some things, but again, they're not all going to be documented. For instance, if we look at the PEB structure here on MSDN, you see the res these reserved. Though That means those are undocumented by Microsoft, but all the other websites will have all that information for you, so don't rely on Microsoft for those. We are going to start with NT Query Information Process. If you copy this into your project, and just to get started, this is just basically our external hack project, um, just a base, an empty project here. All it does is get the module base address. We are targeting our current process which is why we're using git current process ID, and we're just going to be looking for this NTDLL module. So this is using the old tool help 32 snapshot method, and we are going to write a second method that uses it by passing, uh, parsing the peb loader uh, in memory module linked list. So to do that, we got our NT query information process, and we'll grab that, and we're going to paste it into our new header file called ntapi.h, and we are just going to modify it to turn it into a type def function pointer. So that's turning this into a function pointer. All exported functions are STD call. So that's how we know it's that. Now, this is what happens when you start using these is we have something that's undefined. So we're going to go to x64 dbg and their header file here where they have all the reverse structures. And we're going to grab each of the things we need. And you're going to notice you end up needing a lot. It's just like doing an SDK in uh, for CSGO. Each thing you add, you're going to add 20 more things. So that looks good right there. That's all we actually need just for this. But the whole point is this is that we need the PEB and the loader. So let's go down here and let's search for PEB. We can we found our PEB here, type def struct underscore PEB. We'll grab this whole structure, paste that in above this. Now we're going to find some other things that we need. All right, we need Unicode strings. So we search that up. And then you're just going to repeat this process for everything that you need. And I'm going to do that and fast forward the video right now. It looks like that will compile now. I just want to make sure we got all stuff we need. We need loader data table, uh, table entry. You'll see why once we get uh, start coding. So let's find that guy right here. So once you've got everything you need, it comes out to about 500 lines of code. If you're missing anything, you'll find out later as you start coding. So now let's, over, let's go over to mem.h and start doing some functions here. So it's going to be a couple of different wrapper functions. We're going to do a peb, get peb, external, and that's going to take a handle called hproc. We are going to have peb pointer, get peb, 
internal. And we're going to do loader underscore data table entry pointer git loader entry internal const wchar underscore t pointer mod name. You will want to use wide char for that because it just makes your life easier down the road. And then char git module base address internal peb. And that's going to take a constant wchar underscore t pointer mod name. So basically, we're going to call this function, which is going to call this function, which is going to call this function. So it's just a wrapper around those three things. And then I'm going to, sh going to show you how to do it externally as well, just to throw that in. So let's copy these four functions, go over to memcpp, paste those in. So this video, we're only going to show you the full process internally, but I'm just going to sh throw in one external function here as well. So this function will be uh, process basic information pbi and then peb peb equals and we're going to initialize that all to zero and then we're going to do a t and t query information process we're going to use that function pointer we made and we're going to create a function pointer and we're going to call it nt query information process and we're going to set that to let's copy that cast to this and we're going to do git proc address git module handle and the we're going to do uh, ntd ntdll.dll that is the module that exports the function we're looking for and the function is going to be nt query information process and then we're going to do nt status status equals nt query information process and we're going to do hproc process basic information address of pbi size of pbi a zero or null pointer there and then if nt underscore success status we're going to check the result and we're then if we get it and it's good we're going to do read process memory hproc pbi.peb base address, address of peb, size of peb, zero. That should be good. This needs to be a C. This is a capital P, and that will make us a copy of our peb. And then we're going to return peb. So basically, we're getting the address of this function, right? And we're casting it to our function pointer. And then we're calling the function via that pointer with the handle. Um, ND create information process, it can find lots of different types of info. Um, it basically returns a different structure. So the structure we're using is process basic information. And so the name of this, uh, I think this is just an enumerator, is process basic information. So the goal is to get a PBI. Why do we want a PBI? Because PBI contains the PEB pointer. It's got some other things, but really those are not really that important. The PEB is what we really want. That will get it externally. And from there, from there you can do whatever you want with the PEB. But let's move on to our internal function. This is going to be easy. It's going to use a macro. Uh, we're going to do if def underscore win 64. And if that's defined, we're going to do peb pointer peb equals uh, peb pointer cast double underscore read gsq word. And we're going to pass in 0x60. So we are reading uh, segment registers. That's what we're doing here. And then we're going to do else peb. It's going to be a pep pointer. A uh, pep equals, it's actually going to be the same thing. We're just going to change a little something, something. So this is going to be read not GSQ word, but read FSD word. Different register, different segment register. And we're going to do a 0x30. And then we're going to end if. And then we're going to return pep. That is it. So if we're compiling for x64, it'll use this command, otherwise, this one. All right, this is going to be our main function, and this is just going to be a wrap around it. So let's just take care of this wrapper first. It's going to be loader underscore table uh, data underscore table entry uh, mod entry equals this. And we're just going to pass in the same argument mod name. And then we're going to return. And because I'm using a char pointer for addresses in this project, we're going to do mod entry 
uh, DLL base. That has the base address of the module. So that's a wrapper, and this is what this function is going to look like. This is kind of complicated. So loader underscore data table underscore entry pointer mod entry equals null pointer. Just set that there, and then we're going to get the peb. So peb pointer peb equals get peb internal. Easy. And then we're going to list underscore entry uh, head equals peb pointer uh, loader. And then we're going to go into in memory order module list. And once we're done typing this, I'll explain how all this works. Uh, list entry current equals head. And then we're going to do a for loop, and it's going to be for auto cur equals head. Cur dot f link does not equal address of peb uh, loader slash in in memory order module list. And then cur equals the value pointed to by cur dot f link. Oh, and the reason we're getting the error is that needs to be a semicolon. Okay, cool. And then we're going to do loader data table entry pointer mod equals we're going to cast this it's going to be loader data table entry again and but it's going to be a pointer and then we're going to do containing record this so this is like a little macro function and it you have to use it if you don't use it and you try to write your own you're going to lose your mind i tried to do it and trust me it's not worth it just use that function uh that macro so loader data table entry and then we're I believe this is just like an enumerator again. In memory order list links. Gorgeous. Okay. And then once we get that mod entry, it's going to be if uh, mod base DLL name dot buffer. And then in here, we're going to do a string compare. So if underscore WCSICMP, that is a case insensitive, insensitive wide character string compare. And we're going to do mod name, and then we're going to do mod uh, base DLL name dot buffer. And then we're going to check the result of that for zero. And then mod entry equals mod, and then we're going to break. And then after all that good stuff happens, return mod entry. Okay. It's similar to what we're doing with our original git module base uh, function, right? And our get proc ID functions kind of similar, but it's just using a different method. Throw in, we gotta throw our zero back in there. Um, so yeah, we're using wide character string because you know Windows in the background, everything is wide character because they need the operating system to work for all languages, right? So you need wide chars for that. So if the thing we're comparing against is wide char, we're just gonna pass in a wide char. You're just gonna throw an L macro in front of your argument and that makes life easy. So first thing, we're just setting mod entry and L pointer. This is basically our return variable. We're getting the peb and so that we can parse the loader. Inside the loader are three structures called in memory order module list. That is the, there's three right here. So it's basically, it's the same list of modules. It's just three different linked lists that are in different orders. It doesn't really matter what you use. I just like to use in memory, I think, because you're starting in lower memory and going to the higher memory. But again, doesn't matter. But you do need to take in consideration if you were to like hide your module from this linked list, but then the anti-cheat parsed it using this linked list, they'd get you. So you have to remove it from all three if that's what you're going to be doing. So basically the whole point of what we're doing is we need this link list right here. And to get it, we need the PEB uh, loader data. To get that, we need the PEB. To get the PEB, we need NT query information process. If you're internal, you don't really need it, but if you're external, you do. There's multiple ways to find it. This is really just one. So then what is this list entry all about? If we go to definition on this, list entry is a structure which contains two of the same structures, a forward link and a back link. So in a linked list, this is a node in a linked list, but all it does is point forwards and backwards. There's no data here. So how does that work? Well, the data we're looking for is the loader uh, data table entry. And so let's look for that. Let's just go back here. We have the PEB and the loader. And then you can see here when we're containing record, we're looking for this data type here. So that's a loader data table entry. These are actually the nodes that are in the linked list. You'll notice if you go to the top, look at the look at these first two things. These are both those list entry nodes for the things we already know about. 
so if if we cast this structure to a to the list entry type and we access the forward and back links we're actually accessing the the forward and back links of this entry here you see so this the linked list is built into it looks like it's just a node of these objects but it's actually a node of these objects which you can easily go through via this just by casting so we can walk this linked list by accessing this just by casting it to a list entry it's kind of confusing if you look at it in depth it'll make sense to you but anyways this is the structure we actually want this is what's got all the juicy stuff right we have the dll base address the entry point the size of the image full dll name that includes i think that includes the entire path okay so c colon backslash program files whatever and base dll name is just the name of the file itself ntdll.dll etc and this is a union so it's like a it's like a packed structure right and i don't really have any use for most of those flags but there'll be some other stuff down here that you'll also need again not we're not going to get into all that in the video we just want to show you a simple way of using this so we get our head of a linked list right and then we get a copy of it which is going to be current because we want to compare the current against the head right and so the head is this so this is basically a while loop but it's converted into a for loop so the current is set to the head and if the current equals this then we're now pointing at the head so we're now at the tail of the linked list so if we're at the tail then we've already parsed the whole linked list and we're done so at that point you can stop and for each iteration of the loop we're just going to set current to the next node in the list and then containing record is going to parse this f link thing looking for in memory order links and it's going to turn this structure okay and a pointer to it and then we just simply check the buffer we're just checking if it's non-zero just for like a little error checking we can also check dot length um as well i believe and then we're doing a string compare we're looking for the mod name we passed in and then we're returning it simple right so now we can go over to our main and we're going to copy this line and we're going to do mod char uh, mod base two and we're going to do git module base address internal pep and we are just going to pass in just the module name but remember we need to use an l macro because it's unicode or wide char and now we should be able to run this and both of these should return the same value so i'm not doing any output but mod base one mod base two if you look down here they're both the same thing in that locals window okay so both these functions work identically we know it works just real quick i didn't show you the external version so here we are calling open process using git current process id to get the process handle and then we're calling our git peb internal we already know that works but here's the external function passing in the handle process so this is the external peb getter so that's peb2 so i have peb1 here which is a pointer i have peb2 here which is the actual structure and if you just check it out they do line up 001 0 0.4 0 0 0 0001 uh 0 x 0 4 is what i meant to say and then nt query query info proc with the 16 there so those both match up just fine so both functions work the job's done so you've just learned the first step to dealing with undocumented windows functions and structures i really hope you enjoyed this video again guidedhacking.com slash donate patreon.com slash guidedhacking please support us so that we can continue to make videos and peace out